Hi, PerspectiveWeather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Friday, June 22nd. Another stalled out frontal system to deal with here in the Mid Atlantic region as we head into another weekend. It looks like that stationary front will advance slowly as a warm front over the next 24 to 36 hours or so. And then another cool frontal system will slide slowly south and east late Sunday causing likely another round of showers and thunderstorms late in the day on Sunday. And then we get spectacular weather, it looks like, for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. Comfortable temperatures and humidity levels with high pressure to the north taking control of the weather around here for the first half of next week. Looking beyond that, it looks like high pressure ridging will set up over the northeast U.S. at the end of next week going into the uh, early part of July, it looks like we could have some hot weather in the I-95 corridor as we end June and begin July, and that hot weather could last right through the J July 4th holiday. We'll get a little bit into that longer range outlook over the next few minutes. First of all, let's take a look at the surface map. Here we go, low pressure, kind of an interesting low pressure system, spinning over the middle part of the country for the last couple of days, a very uh, synoptic type low pressure area that you see in the winter time or perhaps a hurricane that moved over land a quite a nice spiral to the clouds with this particular low pressure system and here we go a stalled out frontal system again in the mid-atlantic region this will slowly advance to the north as a warm front over the next 24 to 36 hours or so some decent rain already occurring in the dc metro region they certainly can have some downpours uh, over the next several hours, that rain will advance slowly to the north and east, likely uh, reaching the Philadelphia metro region later this afternoon and then New York City later tonight. As that front moves northward over the next 24 to 36 hours or so, there will be a continuation of the threat for scattered showers and thunderstorms on Saturday and Saturday night. Ultimately, a frontal system up in this area right here will drop slowly south and east late Sunday. That cool frontal passage will then usher in spectacular weather for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in the D.C., Philadelphia, New York City corridor throughout much of the northeastern part of the nation. Well, here's a colorized infrared satellite loop from the Penn State EWAL site. And here is that spin in the atmosphere associated with that strong low pressure system that has been over the center part of the nation, now moving over the uh, Midwest. Again, a nice spin showing up here in the atmosphere. And a frontal system extends eastward, basically right into the Mid-Atlantic region. Stationary front right now, but as this low pressure system starts to pull to the north and east towards the Great Lakes, that stationary front will return to the north as a warm front. And it looks like it'll be cool today and still a bit on the cool side uh, early tomorrow, but then warmer air pushes into the I-95 corridor later tomorrow, and certainly Sunday looks like a considerably warmer day than Saturday, as that warm front should be to the north, and we'll be a awaiting the arrival of a cool front from the northwest. Well, in terms of rainfall, certainly the D.C. metro region looks like they're in store for some heavy rain uh, over the next several hours, more so than up across Pennsylvania area or New Jersey and New York. It looks like it'll be a very slow advancement to the north and east with this particular system. Again, some decent rain already falling in the D.C. metro region, certainly cooler than normal for the day with wall-to-wall uh, uh, -wall clouds uh, today, uh, also cloudy in Philadelphia and New York City, and cooler than normal, high temperatures confined to the 70s, in the I-95 corridor. Showers can reach the Philly metro region later this afternoon, probably holding off until later tonight in New York City. But again, some downpour activity over the next several hours in the D.C. metro region. Well, let's walk through last night's 6Z GFS model run. We'll look at the surface uh, in six-hour increments. All these maps from tropicaltippets.com. Here we go, some uh, yellow showing up here by early this morning from the uh, 6Z GFS model run indicating some significant rainfall in a six hour period and again let's move forward here some downpour activity in DC probably holding off in Philadelphia until later on this afternoon uh, you see it's kind of a, a slow advancement to the north and east over the next several hours but DC is locked in 
they'll be getting some significant rainfall this morning into the afternoon hours. Ultimately, by later on tonight and tomorrow morning, basically scattered showers and thunderstorms all the way from D.C. to Philadelphia to New York City. That low-pressure area that is spinning around over the Midwest now this morning turns to the north and east, towards, heads towards the Great Lakes, and that pushes a the stationary front northward as a warm front over the next 24 hours or so. We keep moving forward. Still the threat of some showers and thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon into the evening. Temperature could jump in the afternoon tomorrow following the passage of that warm front, continuation of a shower and thunderstorm threat tomorrow night. And then by Sunday, we'll have a lot of rain-free time on Sunday. Partly sunny skies return much warmer than Saturday. Highs probably in the mid to upper 80s on Sunday. But then a weak cool front starts to approach from the north and west. So there'll be some showers and embedded thunderstorms starting to appear first in southwestern New York, upstate Pennsylvania. And some of those can make it into the I-95 Carter late in the afternoon on Sunday or early Sunday night. Again, a lot of rain-free time on Sunday. If, in fact, it does rain, it should not be for a long period of time. But there can be some scattered showers and thunderstorms associated with that cool frontal system. That then drops through here by Monday morning. High pressure over the Great Lakes, a cool Canadian high, especially for this time of the year. Very impressive, very comfortable air for, uh, in terms of temperatures and humidity. It looks like just spectacular weather for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in the northeastern part of the nation. Well, let's now take a look at the 500 millibar height anomaly forecast from last night's 6Z GFS. And we'll go longer range into the beginning part of July just to show the potential uh, hot weather pattern setting up for the northeastern part of the country as we end June and begin July, perhaps right into the July 4th weekend. Here we go. That surface low pressure area showing up in the upper levels as well, deep upper level low. And again, that's contributing to... Uh, copious amounts of rainfall from the Midwest into the Mid-Atlantic region. Let's push ahead in six-hour increments. That heads towards the northeast, towards the Great Lakes, S pushes a warm front through the I-95 corridor region on Saturday, again producing scattered showers and thunderstorms from today right into tomorrow night. And then that front lifts north, turns much warmer on Sunday, high temperatures in the 80s. Here we are by Sunday morning, and then we'll be looking upstream to a cool frontal system that arrives in the I-95 corridor uh, late Sunday, Sunday night, perhaps with a round of showers and thunderstorms. And then that uh, ushers in cool Canadian high pressure for the first half of next week. Again, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday look spectacular with comfortable temperatures and humidity levels. But then by later next week, start to look here to the north and east. The orange represents above normal heights for this time of the year. And here we are now. Here we are by Thursday. Notice, starting to show up here over the Midwest by the latter part of next week. And that just moves over the northeastern part of the country and intensifies. Here we are by Friday and then Saturday. This is Saturday a week from tomorrow, June 30th, strong, abnormally strong, high pressure ridging over the northeastern part of the nation. That just sits there and intensifies. Whenever you have strong high pressure ridging like this over the northeast U.S. this time of the year, that opens the door for some tropical activity down in the Caribbean Sea, the Bahamas, the Gulf of Mexico. Basically, clockwise flow of air here will uh, push any tropical system from uh, the east to the west and it adds to some low-level convergence down here in the southwestern Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea, the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So not only will the northeast U.S. turn hot at the end of June and here we are by Sunday, July 1st, but tropical activity may be on the increase down in that particular part of the Atlantic Basin, the southwestern Atlantic, the, the Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico. And as we move forward here, that just sits and spins here, that strong ridging. Here we are now into the early part of that first week in July. And again, that hot weather could hang on until July 4th holiday. 
still a little bit too early to be too certain about that. We certainly will go through a stretch of hot weather at the end of June, the beginning part of July. And then notice here some upper level low starting to show up down in the uh, southwestern Atlantic, indicative of the potential for some tropical mischief uh, during that first week of July. Again, this is a kind of a warning sign for tropical activity. Whenever you have high pressure ridging to the north here over New England, over southeastern Canada this time of the year, that can lead to tropical activity down the southwestern Atlantic near the Bahamas, the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean Sea. So we'll monitor all of that over the next several days. But unsettled weather today, tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow night, even later on Sunday with some more rain for the Mid-Atlantic region, and then spectacular weather for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. That's it for now. For PerspectiveWeather.com, I'm meteorologist Paul Orient.